All right, so here we go with our last step of aerobic cellular respiration. Uh, this is going to be oxidative phosphorylation. All right, so recall that um, phosphorylation is the process by which an inorganic phosphate group is attached to, frankly, any molecule, but in this case, we're going to attach it to ADP, making more ATP, adenosine triphosphate. All right, so recall that um, glucose is going to be converted into pyruvate in the cytosol or outside the mitochondrion, and the pyruvate will be brought into the matrix where it will go through the citric acid cycle, and then the electron carriers that are generated during, during the, uh, the Krebs cycle are going to be um, brought to our oxidative phosphorylation step. So what we're going to do is pretty much zoom in on this inner membrane here. Okay, this is a, a this inner membrane is highly convoluted and folded. And what that does is it creates a lot of surface area uh, for this oxidative phosphorylation process. So we're going to zoom in here. I'm going to show you what that looks like zoomed in. All right. So let's get our, our bearing straight here. Um, this location is going to be our matrix. And then this area here is going to be the intermembrane space. Okay, so recall on our previous picture that that intermembrane space is right here. Okay, it's all, all this. All this is intermembrane space. Okay, whereas inside here, this is the matrix. This is all matrix here, matrix, matrix, matrix. Okay. All right. So, the oxidative phosphorylation is going to basically be two, two main things. We're going to have an electron transport chain, and then we're going to have chemiosmosis, which you've seen before. All right, so here we go. Actually, you've seen electron transport chains as well, but this is going to be in the in or on the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, whereas the electron transport chain you've seen before uh, was on the thylakoid membrane. But processes are extremely similar. So, NADH molecule that was created, um, this could be either from glycolysis or the Krebs cycle, is going to more or less pass the electrons back Those electrons are then going to move across this electron transport chain. As they move across, they're going to lose their energy, and protons from the matrix are going to more or less use that energy to move to the intermembrane space. Okay, and a lot of diagrams are going to show those protons moving across multiple pro proteins which is fine okay so as that electron moves across more protons are going to enter that intermembrane space and you can see we're going to start to form a, a proton gradient in that intermembrane space as the electron makes its way over here there's a diatomic oxygen molecule which acts as the final electron acceptor. Okay, and basically what that means is the oxygen along with electrons and protons are going to combine together to make water. All right, as this gradient accumulates in the intermembrane space, those protons will flow through this enzyme. This is ATP synthase. As the proton flows through ATP synthase, it's going to initiate the inorganic phosphate to attach to ADP forming a TP. 
and that that proton will just come on through. Remember, it doesn't actually become part of ATP. It just facilitates the, the phosphorylation process. Okay, so this proton here can be the, the one that becomes part of the water molecule here. So, again, you got your electron transport chain here. Electrons given back by NADH are going to move across. That's going to contribute to the gradient. You also have a, another electron... Um, donor FADH2 who similarly passes electrons back becoming FAD and these electrons pretty much do the exact same thing they're going to move across that electron transport chain and as they do that they're going to help contribute to the gradient um, which then contributes to the formation of ATP and remember this process is called chemiosmosis over to the right Whereas, you know, on this side over here, this is all considered our electron transport chain. The movement of those electrons helping to form that gradient. All right, so recall, you know, just a couple quick things. The, the oxygen here, this is your final electron acceptor. Oxygen is a very electronegative um, element. And so that's essentially the electrons want to go towards this, this molecule and that results in the formation of water, which is one of your products of the cellular respiration reaction. Um, this production of ATP is fairly tremendous in comparison to glycolysis in the Krebs cycle. Um, you will produce between 32 to 34 ATP during oxidative phosphorylation. Whereas, if you remember, uh, glycolysis is about 2 ATP and the Krebs cycle per glucose is 2 ATP. So if you do all three aerobic steps you're going to end up with 36 to 38 ATP molecules and again you're getting 32 to 34 from your very last step. Tapping into the potential energy of these electron carrier molecules which you made uh, NADH is made in glycolysis in the Krebs cycle and FADH2 is made in the Krebs cycle